Hi, welcome along to another video. This time we're going to fact check an article from the USA Today about the harp facility in Brazil and also Kokona, Alaska. Links to all the information shown is in the description box of this video. Please like, subscribe, thumbs up, all that sort of thing. Thank you. Okay, so the USA Today article from last month. It's entitled Fact Check Video Shows 2017 Water Shortage Protest Not Harp Being Destroyed. The claim video shows harp being destroyed. So it goes on to say about an April the 8th Instagram post. There's a direct link to the post and an archive link to the internet archive. It shows people knocking electrical towers down with a crowd cheering in the background. Harp destroyed reads the post's caption. One, but it's a start. It was liked over 3,000 times in three days. There is a video shown at the top of the article. If we follow the direct link to the Instagram post, initially it starts with um, it's blocked out because it's false information reviewed by independent fact checkers. So if we look at the post, you can see the towers there. They do look like electrical towers. Uh, who knows? Electricity is used in many ways, especially the electric charge method, which could also be associated with ionospheric heaters, which is technically an electric charge method of weather modification. So the USA Today's fact checkers have rated that as false information. The video shows water restriction protests from 2017 in Brazil. So the video posted above the start of the article by the USA Today, as you can see, is titled Austria Climate Protest During Gas Conference, and it's from the Associated Press. How that occurs, I do not know. So if we fact check the video shown by the US Today to fact check the video which shows heart being destroyed, we can see that it's not even from Brazil, it's from Austria and it's not from Instagram and what was clearly a mobile phone quality video. It's a high quality video from the Associated Press. So, moving on. The High Frequency Active Rural Research Programme, or HARP, has not been destroyed. This is accurate because that's in Alaska, in Gakona, Alaska. There isn't a HARP facility in Brazil and they are ionospheric heaters. So there is only one harp facility that's in Kokona, Alaska. The rest have different names, but they are collectively known as ionospheric heaters. So harp not being destroyed is reiterated in the following two paragraphs. The video does not show harp being destroyed. Harp is still operational and has not been attacked, Rod Boyce, a spokesperson for the program, said in an email to the USA Today which obviously they're referring to the Harp facility in Kokona, Alaska. So a bit more fact checking on the USA Today's fact check. Contrary to the Post's claim, Harp has only one location, Kokona, Alaska, what we've just said. There are two other ionospheric heaters in the world, so they're confirming that they are ionospheric heaters, and they're stating there are only two others. That's the Sura Ionospheric Heating Facility in Russia and the ISCAT Scientific Association in Norway. But they are not affiliated with HARP, Boyce said, the spokesperson for the HARP facility in Kokona. So if we now take a look at Brazil, the marker there shows Fazenda Igarashi. That's the farm where the Instagram post comes from. And what the arrows are showing is where Brazil's ionospheric heater is, which is 1,250 kilometres away from the farm that's allegedly been attacked in 2017, nearly 775 miles, quite far, in a completely different state. I'll put the coordinates of these facilities in the information section, so you can go and look for them yourself in maps, quite easy to do. The original ionospheric heater in Brazil was in the square in the left of the image, quite overgrown there. That was in about 2010. The strip, which is the newer array, and this image is from about three or four years ago. In current images on maps, it does look 
quite overgrown. So whether it's still operational or not, who knows? There's a picture of the UK facility in Wales. There's a picture of the Indian facility and there are others around. So that was Brazil and other places. If we move over now to Texas in the USA, there's an article about Texas-based geoengineering company hopes to increase rain output. Rainwater Tech aims to solve drought conditions in Texas. So we go through a little bit of this article. So to be clear, they're calling it a geoengineering company and they're going to bring weather controlling technology to their region. So that's not a geoengineering company, that's a weather modification company. Rainwater Tech is a weather modification company. So a Texas weather modification company is hoping to bring weather controlling technology to their region to boost rain production and solve drought conditions. Rainwater Tech which is based in Austin, Texas, uses a technological process that enlarges raindrops in clouds to enhance rain output anywhere from 10% to 20%. It's physically and scientifically impossible to enlarge rain droplets, unless of course you've got PIM particles, then you can enlarge or reduce anything. But because PIM particles are something from a fantasy movie and they don't exist in the real world, it's actually impossible to enlarge raindrops. All you can do is attract water, atmospheric moisture, to the area you're targeting with the weather modification process. Ionospheric heaters, we've been chatting about them. What we do is basically produce an ion plume that goes up into the atmosphere, attaches to the cloud nuclei and enhances rain. Rainwater Tech CEO Mike Nefkins told KXAN. The company, which was founded in 2022, intends to primarily serve governments and municipalities, as well as farmers and corporations. We'll look at the KXAN article in a moment, where you'll see that the company was not founded in 2022, the American company was founded in 2022. Specifically, Rainwater Tech is hoping to target Lake Travis in Austin, which has been an inconsistent supply of water to the city in the past few years. Stop adding people to your city, you won't need any more water, will you? Try coexisting with your environment instead of controlling it. Simple solution. So Rainwater Tech will use three antennas to capture weather coming from rainier parts of the country without disrupting any weather cycles. That is scientifically impossible. If you redistribute atmospheric moisture from one area to another, you are disrupting weather cycles. You are changing them. That's what weather modification is. It's an artificial manipulation of the natural environment and its weather systems. You will always see with these companies that they all claim they're environmentally friendly, they're sustainable, they don't disrupt anything, they're not doing anything wrong, it's all very nice and friendly and fluffy, give it a cuddle, it's lovely, embrace it. That's because they are a business trying to sell you a product. It's called marketing. As you know, it's no different than showing a chicken in a grassy field with an egg next to it. It gives you the impression that everything's lovely and there's not a million chickens in a barn under artificial lighting where none of them can escape when one of them gets bird flu. Unlike the natural environment where if one of the flock gets bird flu, all the other birds fly away, circumventing the spread of disease. Whether modification is marketed, no different than other industries that cause harm. As always, they want you to look at what their left hand is doing and not what their right hand is doing. And they'll use any words possible to get you convinced of this. Rainwater tech is no different. It's a profit making business. It needs you on side to spend your money on its business. In this case, your tax money. The confirmation there'll be free antennas for Lake Travis 
With rainfall generation technology, rainfall can be generated in regions that have seen a decline in recent decades, which is an interesting statement considering the Texas Weather Modification Association and its members have been modifying the weather in Texas for decades. So a logical question from that is, is what activities by the Texas Weather Modification Association the Panhandle Groundwater Conservation District activities that have been going on for decades. How comes that hasn't solved the problem then? Because it seems that there is a new problem that only rainwater tech can solve for you. The last sentence there, no chemicals are used in the rainfall generation process, which is correct in the sense of the rainfall generation process, maybe, because they're using the electric charge method but chemicals were probably used in the production process of that technology. And of course, it needs to be fueled. That requires chemicals and chemical production. So again, it's clever marketing. So going to Rainwater Tech's website, Rainwater Tech is ready to develop, manufacture and commercialize ionization, rainfall generation technology. There's a few things to go through there. Chemical free process. No, it's not. The complete process is not chemical free. Environmentally friendly? No, it is not. There is nothing environmentally friendly about manipulating the natural environment. Once the natural environment is manipulated, it becomes an unnatural environment. That is not environmentally friendly. There are always consequences from atmospheric moisture redistribution. The interesting one there, that you'll want to pay attention to is it's globally scalable. What that means is, is that it can be used on a global level. It's the first commercial version of this. All previous electric charge method stuff generally comes under scientific research or experiments. So in a way they're right, the first commercial version. In other words, if you've got the money, you can buy it and do it. It boosts rainfall potential through ionization based platforms, mimics nature to generate rainfall. There's your proof that it cannot be environmentally friendly. Something that mimics nature is not nature. So how your environment should be is not going to be how your environment should be. It focuses on drought areas. Well, it can focus on any area. They choose to put the technology Again, that's marketing, purely to make you think that's a good thing. They're solving drought. And it doesn't matter how much they try and tell you that atmospheric moisture redistribution does not cause drought somewhere else, it does. You cannot magic water up out of nothing, such as what they're stating, to increase the size of rain droplets extra atmospheric moisture must be brought to the area that's why they have what's called a target area so there's a cartoon image to explain how their technology works if we zoom in a bit on the image they say the image in the bottom right is a product rendering used for illustrative purposes only the whole image is a product rendering so in comparison to brazil and the alleged video there you can definitely see similarities in the tech, even including the struts going across the posts. But we will see a, another rendering in a second of that tech. So keep that image in mind. So the KXAN article from the Internet Archive, Austin-based company wants to control the rain over Lake Travis. And in the original article that the Fox News article was referencing, the company has been using the tech in the Middle East and Australia for 10 years. So the American company was started in 2022, but the company has been using the tech for 10 years elsewhere. I have had a quick look for some information to do with Australia, but there isn't much out there. Australian viewers can go and look for that yourself. You've got the name of the company, the name of the CEO, and you know that they've been operating in your country for 10 years. So there should be some legal regulation, legislative documents out there as it would require licensing from your state legislators. If we look at another rendering image, 
again this is marketing this very well could be the actual tech although no power supply is shown you're being shown the antenna only but this is highly likely a, a marketing image render if you look at the shadow on the posts then look at the shadow on the hills that doesn't work so this is a marketing image in the Middle East in 2017 even though the technology looks different this is also the electric charge method same process so the, the electric charge method has been around since the 1960s it was developed further into ionospheric heaters in the 1980s and there are now quite a few facilities around the world and there are other versions being developed available for deployment by companies such as rainwater tech and magnetic technologies which should leave no doubt your weather is modified so we'll leave that video there with that information there's lots of other news to bring to you that will come in a second video very soon but in the meantime look after yourselves take care and see you next time